Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Maria Carmel Arnigo, and I am about to discuss to you the great mathematicians and their contributions in 16th century, which are useful up to present. The cultural, intellectual, and artistic movement of the Renaissance, which saw a resurgence of learning based on classical sources, began in Italy around the 14th century and gradually spread across most of Europe over the next two centuries. So around 14th century in Italy, an intellectual and artistic movement saw a growth of learning based on classical sources that gradually spread over the next two centuries, which is the 15th and 16th century. The Super Magic Square. It is a tribute to respect in which the mathematics was held in Renaissance Europe that same German artist Albrecht Durer included an order for magic square in his engraving Melancholia. One, in fact, it is a so-called super magic square with many more lines of addition symmetry than a regular 4x4 four four magic square. The year of the work is 1514, is shown in the two bottom central squares. So this is an example of a super magic square. As you can see, the 1514 year is in the bottom of the super magic square. So as an example, you can see this one. This is equal to 16. And if you will add this one, which is equal to 13, that would be equal to 29 plus 1. That would be equal to 30. And the last one plus 4, that would be equal to 34. So all which Durer was paid respect for he was claimed by an order of four magic square, which became the basis for this super magic square that a combination of any four numbers will be equal to 34. During the 16th century and early 17th century, the equals, multiplication, division, radical or the roots, decimal and inequality symbols were gradually introduced and standardized. The use of decimal fractions and decimal arithmetic is usually attributed to the Flemish mathematician Simon Stephen in the late 16th century. In the Renaissance Italy of the early 16th century, Bologna University in particular was famed for its intense public mathematics competitions. It was in just such a competition that the unlikely figure of the young self-taught Niccolo Fontana Tartaglia revealed to the world the formula of solving first one type and later all types of cubic equations or equations which terms including H, X, Q. An intense mathematics competition famed Bologna University in 16th century and in this competition, the formula of solving all types of cubic equations was revealed by a young Niccolo Fontana Tartaglia. An achievement it had to consider impossible and which had stumped the best mathematicians of China, India, and Islamic world. Niccolo Fontana became known as Tartaglia for a speech defect he suffered due to an injury he received in a battle against the invading French army. So Tartaglia's achievement was considered as impossible, which challenged the best mathematicians of China, India, and Islamic world. Nicola Fontana had an injury from a battle which made him have a speech defect that made him known as Tartaglia or the Stammer. He was a poor engineer known for designing fortifications, a surveyor of topography seeking the best means of defense or offense in battles, and a bookkeeper in the Republic of Venice. But he was also a self-taught but wildly ambitious mathematician. He distinguished himself by producing, among other things, the first Italian translation of works by Archimedes and Euclid from uncorrupted Greek texts, as well as an acclaimed compilation of mathematics of his own. Cubic equations, Tartaglia's greatest legacy to mathemat mathematical history, though occurred when he won the 1535 Bologna University Mathematics Competition by demonstrating a general algebraic formula 
for solving cubic equations. In the competition, he beat Sai Peone Del Ferro, or at least Del Ferro's assistant floor, who had coincidentally produced his own partial solution to the cubic equation problem not long before. And Tartaglia is usually credited with the first general solution. So Tartaglia beat Del Ferro because he discovered the first general solution in solving cubic equation, while Del Ferro just coincidentally produced a partial solution. Tartaglia even encoded his solution in the form of a poem in an attempt to make it more difficult for other mathematicians to steal it. Tartaglia's definitive method was, however, linked to Herolamo Cardano or Cardan, a rather eccentric and confrontational mathematician, doctor, and Renaissance man, and author throughout his lifetime of some 131 books. Cardano published it himself in his 1545 book called Ars Magna, along with the work of his own brilliant student, Lodovico Ferrari. Ferrari, on seeing Tartaglia's cubic equation, had realized that he could use a similar method to solve quadratic equations. So Ferrari made use of Tartaglia's work as his basis as he realized that he could use a similar method to solve quadratic equations. In this work, Tartaglia, Cardano, and Ferrari, between them demonstrated the first uses of what are now known as complex numbers, combinations of real and imaginary numbers of type A plus BI, where I is the imaginary unit of square root of negative 1. It fell to another Bologna resident, Rafael Bombelli, to explain at the end of the 1560s exactly what imaginary numbers really were and how they could be used. Ferrari eventually came to understand cubic and quartic equations much better than Tartaglia. When Ferrari challenged Tartaglia to another public debate, Tartaglia initially accepted but then perhaps wisely decided not to show up and Ferrari won by default. Poor that Tartaglia died penniless and unknown. Ferrari, on the other hand, obtained a prestigious teaching post while still in his teens after Cardano resigned from it and recommended him and was eventually able to retire young, quite rich, despite having started out as Cardano's servant. Cardano himself, an accomplished gambler and chess player, wrote a book called Liber Deludo Alive, Book on Games of Chance. Cardano was also the first to describe hypocycloids, later named Cardano or Cardanic Circles. Hypocycloids is the pointed plane curve generated with a trace of a fixed point on a similar circle that the rolls within a larger circle. The colorful Cardano remained notorious, notoriously short of money throughout his life, largely due to his gambling habits, and was accused of heresy in 1570 after publishing a horoscope of Jesus. So that would be all. Thank you.